I'm here at Dean's Court enjoying a wonderful day out, and I'm just about to meet up with James, who runs the organic kitchen garden here. Oh my goodness. There you go, perfect. Oh it's beautiful. Mm, natural. Oh, wow. Dean's Court has been home to the Hannum family for 500 years. But William has unearthed buried treasures dating as far back as the Roman period. I spent a week in there with a metal detector. You're kidding me. Yeah. Oh, so fun. One that is of the so fun. That I found <gasps> is this. Wonderful. Which makes perfect sense because Claudius. I mean, did your metal fun. detector go ting? I mean, was it like. Bzzz? It was pretty yeah. busy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. must have been so, so excited. Out on the estate, I'll be finding out what it takes to be a shepherdess. <laughs> How brilliant. All done. How brilliant. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey. But it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband, Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton is a glorious sandstone house dating originally from the 1540s. It is known as Britain's finest manor house, and it is full of wonderful treasures collected by Luke's ancestors. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day, we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. On these trips, I'll be meeting other owners who manage these large houses and estates, as well as some of the fantastic people who work there too. With them, I'll be exploring the history, the landscapes, and the innovations of generations past and present. And I'm particularly keen to meet the remarkable women who, like me, have married into these families, bringing new ideas, energy, and more than a touch of style. I'll be sure to roll up my sleeves and help out with a few jobs along the way. Is there a snake in here? Yeah. What? What? So please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Coming with us. I know. He, lo he does actually love a visitor. He always sort of tends to sort of attach himself to them as if we don't give him enough love. <laughs> so here we are coming to the kitchen garden. Lovely. Hidden behind protective walls, Dean's Court boasts the most glorious kitchen garden, just as it would have done 100 years ago. It provides fruit and vegetables for the family, but also for the wider community. So Julie, come and meet James. Hi. Hey Julie, how's it going? James is totally in charge of just under one acre of kitchen garden. It's yeah, a beautiful. lot of kitchen garden, James. It's a lot, I've got some fantastic volunteers, so yeah, definitely really helps. James's green fingers ensure the kitchen garden is productive all year round. So this kind of here is just all different all varieties, different varieties yeah. of beetroot. Exactly. And are they ready to come up? Yeah, 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 yeah. we could pull one up now. Can we pull one up? Yeah, yeah, so, okay. so basically they're in little clumps. Yeah. So what you want to do is sort of twist one and then pull it out. So okay. if you take, Let me pick, see pick you a nice big juicy one. Okay, yeah. So then with that, and then you twist. Please. And then ah, sort of so that's how you pull, pull it. it out, and then you get a nice, it's beautiful, nice lovely little beach. And a big so, one. I'm looking for a big yeah, one. Yeah, the biggest one in the bunch. So the smaller ones will keep growing. So yep. in a couple of weeks' time, we can take the next one and the next okay. one. So yeah, find a bunch. So, that, of, so I, yeah. that, that's this the one yellow looks one there. Lovely. I'll use this yellow one. Yeah, do. Okay, yeah. little twist. Okay. Oh my goodness. There you go. Perfect. <gasps> Look at that. It's beautiful. Mm, natural. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
the, I mean, can, you know, I don't want to ask if I can take them home, but can Absolutely, I? 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. make a delicious We've got beetroot enough. salad. Beetroot salad, yeah, I love it. Just roasted as well and then tossed for a salad, just simple. And Can I put these in your mm, basket Yeah, we've got then. a basket, yeah. <gasps> Wonderful. And then you've got here behind, you've got uh, so these curly are, kale. Yeah, so some different types of kale. So this is, uh, yeah, a red kale. So these have been here all season, so since the spring, which is now they look a bit unusual for... Um, oh, I love the look of them. Yeah, they're, they're almost like trees yeah. now, aren't they? So, so, so these are ready to be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so this is all ready to go. So ready I can show go. you how... So you sort of yeah, pick the outer leaves. So again, it's like picking them like that. Yeah. Like that. And then we leave a few at the top, so I'll probably take that one right. that far. And then you've still got this lovely. So this will then and this grow. Will just and then this grow. will be. And then yeah, mm. it, just like the beetroots, they'll keep growing, and then they'll you'll be able growing. to take more. So I don't know Hopefully that. They keep growing all winter, won't they? Yeah. So these ones will probably finish, but we've got some other ones over there which went in in the autumn, and then they'll go all the way through until the spring. Well, do you need well, any help with anything? Absolutely. Any yeah, more help? Yeah, hundred percent. There's yeah. some stuff over here we could go and pick for sure. And this soil, James, is particularly fantastic because it's completely organic isn't yeah, it yeah absolutely so yes yeah, so wonderful all, we do the no dig system uh, so what is the no dig system i'm glad you are <laughs> <laughs> it's become it's very popular recently with small scale gardeners right um, really championed by a guy charles dowding over in somerset and basically it's trying to mimic um the natural processes and apply compost directly on top of the soil there you go you can probably okay. give that a tug now you might need both hands there you go. Well, there okay. you go. And then you can just shake, shake it up. Off. Okay. Wow. This yeah. soil is particularly fantastic soil because this was the first kitchen garden in the country to be certified by the Soil Association. So it was William's mother, Jane Hannam, when she came here in 1973, turned it straight away over to an organic wow. garden. So she was, a, yeah, a complete... So she was a real pioneer. Oh, my goodness, a complete pioneer in the, in the organic movement. And she was sort of mixed with the very, very early movers and shakers in the organic um, world. That is very when, early, 1970. 1970, when the rest, what the rest of the world were doing in 1973. They didn't have a clue about... No, I mean, we all were fertilising uh, everything. Fertilising everything. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. So this soil is particularly amazing because it's probably been organic for longer well, than yeah, any other I mean, kitchen garden really in England. Really fantastic yeah. soil. I mean, I, you know, and, and um, that's why I wanted to put a lot of it back. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, so, we'll cut this off and it'll yeah. go in the compost anyway. Yes. And then it's coming back here. So it's not, nothing's because wasted. That's the whole thing, isn't it? Right. Also, it's all about composting the whole time that James then it's puts wonderful. back in the... Yeah. Um, I mean, that is what, it's, it's about giving back and yeah. it's... And, and that is what it's giving back to the land yeah. and then the land giving mm. to us. And it's mm. just this wonderful, perfect cycle. System, That's right. 100%. This is what we want. This one's enormous, this that one cauliflower. Enormous. Yeah, well, we can let you, yeah, these are all cauliflowers growing up. Oh, I have to watch you do it I'll first, though. One, and then you okay. can harvest the big one. The, the big one. That? Okay, brilliant. So you're just going just underneath. Yeah. And then just use this as a serrated knife. So just like a bread knife, it will cut through. Ah. And then there you go. Wonderful. So in there is a cauliflower, so we'll pick off these okay. outer leaves. <gasps> but James, would you use the outer leaves? Yeah, you can cook yeah, with them. Yeah, I would use not them. The, not the biggest No, outer not leaves. right. You want the young rough, ones. But yeah. these younger ones inside, absolutely. <gasps> so I was just picking them off to reveal. Look at that. Fabulous cauliflower. cauliflower. That is, I'm just going to really be naughty here. Yeah. I don't even mind if I get some soil in my mouth because now I know it's that it's been organic since 1973. Yeah, so this is like the it's best the soil in all of England uh, is what I think. Saying, that is delicious. Mmm. Right, okay. So I'll give you that. All right, this is a whopper here. Yeah, yeah. You've got a okay. That is a whopper. Okay. So I'm going to go like, I'm going to go at the base. That's it. Perfect. Okay. So just like, yeah, slicing a slice of bread. Okay. Yeah. How was that, James? Amazing. Is that all right? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to hand you back that knife. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to pull these away, and it's the big reveal right here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Look at this glorious cauliflower. Yeah. So we we'll roast Incredible. that up. Incredible. It'll be delicious. <gasps> it certainly will. I just have to have a little bit of that the right goodness. here. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm. Yeah, organic, fresh, best raw cauliflower I've ever had. Cauliflower. James uses the organic ingredients from the kitchen garden in his cooking, conjuring up the most delicious recipes. You're cooking a curry. I'd love to come and help you. Amazing. 
That would be fantastic. Yeah, 100%. Any help's great. So should I meet you later? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll grab the veg together and we'll meet over there Where? shortly. Cool. Oh my gosh, brilliant. Thank you, James. This has been eye-opening. Fantastic. Ah, I found you. I mean, it was so easy because it smells amazing. Coming soon to American Viscountess at Dean's Court, I helped James prepare an organically homegrown feast savored by the whole family in the dining room. Right, exactly. Two came, three left. Yeah, exactly. Beyond the kitchen garden, William is introducing me to some inquisitive members of the family. All right, wait. So, William, just an FYI. I have a fear of cows. Now, I know that goats aren't the same as cows, but should I be fearful? Right. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Okay. Facing my fear of goats. I just don't want to really leave here with another phobia of another animal. Goats. Okay. Woo! Okay. Okay, yes. You keep hold of the food. Do you have to be super quick at this? Come over here. Okay. Okay, and then we stand back. Wolf is down. And then what happens? And then you'll come and butt her out of the way. No. <laughs> no. Oh yes. Oh wait, look at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so these two goats. The the you have you have goats. Orlando. Yeah. yeah. Who's is huge. He's a Nubian, but goat. Right. And um, Pringles. What is she? Something else. She might be Nubian as well, but. Some people say that he's the biggest goat they've ever seen. Right. Because, and what we've done, we've brought them on here so that they can clear out all this, all this trashy, dried grass here that didn't get mown when we took hay because there are a lot of earthworks here and it was difficult for the tractor. So before right. we move the sheep on for the winter, <clears throat> I want the goats to clear out, clear out all this stuff. And they're already making a good start on it. Uh -huh. And then they go around and they also clear the hedges. Oh, so, so they're useful. Oh, yeah. They're useful goats. Oh, they have a purpose. Okay. They have, they yeah. have a purpose. They're not just pets. But, right. no. <laughs> well, with the names like Orlando and Pringle, I thought maybe they're your, your, your yeah. pet goats. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. They're, okay. okay. They're Pringles. Sorry, like, Pringle. give me. That's it. Give me, give me some That's more. It. Oh, dear. No. Oh dear. No. Sorry, Pringle. Okay. Oh my goodness! Orlando literally like headbutted Pringle out of the way. That was extraordinary. So what happens when you finish with all the feed? Like what happen? Will they, well, they go they after you off, next? Yeah. They don't need. They don't really need feeding. We just do it so that we keep them under control. And when we want to collect them up and take them somewhere else, we right. a little house. They'll come right. Okay. Running. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that so that was it. Yeah. But they're obsessed okay. with food. They think about nothing other than eating. Okay. And it's what they live for. But this is this helps me the next time yeah. I encounter goat. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got some feed with me. Okay. Okay. Orlando and Pringle aren't the only ones mowing the meadows here on the estate. A flock of 35 sheep graze happily under the watchful eye of shepherdess Louise Marshall. It's just so wonderful to wander around Dean's Court. And then, of course, I'm wandering and I find you and I find <laughs> um, your sheep. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when I think of England, I always think of England, green. But, of course, then I see, you know, all around uh, England, you see sheep grazing. But for me, in one sense, it kind of saddens me because I know that the sheep that are grazing are usually going to be on people's plates. Mm -hmm. But that's not yeah. the case with yours, is that right? No, they did start off as a breeding <gasps> flock, but I rapidly changed my mind and <gasps> they've become a rescue sanctuary now. So now I rescue sheep. Do every, you? Uh, everywhere. Uh, you yeah, do? Yeah. But how do you rescue them? Are you, are you finding them it, that um, they've been lost or...? No, sometimes the vet will call me and say there's a lamb here that's going to be um, destroyed because the farmer doesn't <gasps> want to invest the time or the money in them. Um, some people, they have them as pets and they've died and they need new homes or they've moved on or... Right. Um, sometimes they're welfare cases that need to right. be come somewhere so safe. So you kind of rescue the lost sheep? Yeah. yeah. The unwanted, the, <gasps> the unloved. <laughs> we go, there's their feed. They have, okay. it's called sheep nuts. Yep. So it's all sorts of molasses and vegetables all put into a nice little cake for them. And they so, love them. Yeah. Right. So love this them. is like real proper nutrition, nutrition yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So it's always a We've got lots of grass here. It's very yep. nutritious. Um, but these are just an added extra to yeah. keep, keep them sort of friendly towards you and through winter as well, give them a bit extra. And how do you feed them? Do they come up? Yeah, just give it a whole shake and yep. watch, them, watch them run. Okay. Come on, girl. Do you have, do you have your names? 
Oh, Double. yeah. This so you know every single yeah. name. No. This is my oldest sheet. This is Horatia. <gasps> um, Horatia. That's Penny. Here they come. Got buttons. There we are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They're literally <laughs> all coming. Look at this. Look there at this one running. <laughs> that's Rosie. Rosie. That's big old Rosie to Benita you, Lolita. How do you keep track of their names? <laughs> um, well, it's like children, really. Uh, that's Miss Eglantine. Oh. She's really old. She's my second oldest. She's your second oldest. How yeah. old is she then? Uh, she's 14. She's 14. Yeah. So that's there considered old in sheep years. I mean, yeah, she, generally sheep don't really get past nine or ten. Oh, so oh my um, goodness. she's doing really so well. She's fantastic. And she's very active yeah. there too. What we could do, we could put them in their troughs if you like. We can yeah. top up. Okay, top brilliant. Up. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, you start at one end to fill the trough and I'll meet you in the middle. <laughs> and just a little bit in each of them, yeah? Uh, yeah, just stick them all out. <gasps> so cool. <laughs> How brilliant. All done. How brilliant. There you go. They love their food. <gasps> and they're all healthy. They're very healthy, yep. Some You've nursed them all. back to life, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. some have really bit horrible injuries, but yeah, they can all come, if you spend the time and the effort, oh. um, they will come good again. So you're still rescuing? Yeah, If you hear rescuing, yeah. or somebody contacts you, you'll yep. take um, another? The two, there's two commercial farms around here, and in lambing time, they'll often have an orphan, orphans right. or they'll have a mum that's lost their, their lambs in delivery and they don't want to keep the mum anymore because she's not a good breeder for them right. so she'll come here in sort of retirement really like a luxury retirement like home. A, yeah well exactly <laughs> i wouldn't mind that i mean look at you get fed you're on this beautiful estate here who wouldn't want to retire here i hope you are having as much fun watching these episodes of american viscountess as i am making them it is so important to bring history to life and to celebrate these wonderful places but we need your help as we rely entirely on the support of our patrons who help cover the costs of production. Please do join our community of supporters by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all the episodes as well as a lot of other behind the scenes benefits. I really look forward to seeing you there. Dean's Court and its landscape stand testament to the political upheavals and stylistic changes of generations past. From the foundations of the Saxon monastery led by a royal abbess to the 18th century facade we see today. Wonderful. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And this Georgian door. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, it's just Huge extraordinary. Wonderful. Door. Yeah. Right, where so, are we off to? Right, let's go and look at the pond. Fantastic. Over this way. It's just so beautiful and calming here. And look at you yeah. have a pond now too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you have everything here. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Wow. Oh. So. I mean, I mean, this is just so lovely. I mean, I would think I would want to swim there. You know, uh, William, I'm a big cold water. You could do lengths. It's 125 immersion. yards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if um, I do lengths. I like my two minute cold dips. So it's yeah. quite cold, I assume. It is pretty cold. I mean, I've only been in the, in the summer clearing weed. Uh, <laughs> but it's not very deep in, you know, it's about four or five feet deep. Right, so that's perfect for me to do my, my dunking. Yeah, it's absolutely. brilliant. This was probably a Roman reservoir. Ah. originally because we had a Roman fort just across the fields there in okay. about AD 45. Okay. A huge garrison with four and a half thousand legionnaires and um, we dredged it in 2013. We took a thousand tons of debris that had all fallen off the trees out, <gasps> spread it over the field next door and found huge amounts of stuff. I spent a week in there with a metal detector. You're kidding me. Yeah. Oh, so fun. But that one is of the so things fun. that I found <gasps> is this. It's which a Roman is, coin. Uh, it's, it's a Roman <gasps> coin with the head of Claudius. Wonderful. Which makes perfect sense because Claudius was, on, <gasps> was the emperor at the time and he issued a license to the garrisons in England to, to mint their own coins to pay their armies, mm. which was eminently sensible Roman practice rather than shipping money from Rome to the, you know, across the empire. Um, so, so that was a very nice I mean, did your find. metal detector go, I mean, was it like, 
It was pretty yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. must have been so, so excited when you found this. Yeah, because that sort of does confirm that, that this, yeah, this piece of water is is pretty ancient. You're pretty ancient. Yeah. Well, as yeah. is you know all mm. of Dean's Court really. Yeah, yeah. But so there have been people living, you know, living and operating it now. Yeah. This is the other little thing I found. Okay. It doesn't look like much, much, but it's a Saxon <gasps> dress pin. And oh. the British Museum have got lots of these with right. that particular design. It's called polyhedral with dot and pin um, <gasps> pattern. Um, but it's they date from, usually from 600 to 900 AD. AD. So the timing is pretty good for yes. a, a Saxon pond. And I imagine that what, used, what was common was for the Romans when they left, left reservoirs everywhere because they were obsessed with water. Even yes, in a they country were. like yes. England. But they, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, look but, at Bath Spa. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. of course, when the Saxons sort of took over, Instead of digging new ponds, they just took over Roman reservoirs and usually expanded them. And it was very common practice for monasteries to do the same because monasteries needed fish ponds because they had so many days where they couldn't eat meat. Of course. So they ate fish. Yeah. But next to the pond here, we've got these two incredible trees. And this, this is the swamp cypress. Yes. Which is 110 feet tall. <gasps> and mean, next to it, the tulip gigantic. tree, which is about 90, 95 feet tall. Two. American trees. Oh. Which, uh, Anytime I hear the word American, I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so why do you have two American trees well, here at Dean's Court? That's a very good, <laughs> I mean, no, very just, good question. Yes. We think the only possible explanation is that they were planted here by Thomas Hannum, who sailed to America when he returned in early 1607. That he brought them with him and he planted them here. Mm -hmm. So these are. I love doing maths here. Four, I mean, I'm all about aging everything. 400, over 400 years old. 15 something, yeah. And something it, like you know, that. I have to ask this, is there a point that they stop growing? Do they, by, you by know, the root there. do they continue? Um, um, like, like all trees, they just carry on growing. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, they slow down. Right, exactly. Um, but, uh, as long you know, as they're healthy, yeah, they seem very exactly. healthy. You know, the only bit of the tree that's really alive, of course, is the outside. Yes. The, the, the outside yes. wood in the shell. I mean, but, this uh, point of as view As you move is... back from this, oh my from, you can see it's, unbelievable. It's, it's at least twice the height of the house there. This is an exceptional tulip tree. Usually, they only live for three, four hundred years, um, but uh, at the most. But uh, if they're situated on gravel, gravelly soil, and they've got plenty of water like they have yes. here, they apparently in America they will go on for five hundred years. Wonderful. So hopefully this tree's got another hundred years left. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. It's your American souvenirs. Yeah, there they are. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next time, I'll be behind the scenes with Allie. Hello. Hi, Julie. I thought Welcome. I might find you here. Yeah, <laughs> to the morning room. This well, is the, well... So the, the wallpaper... The wallpaper is, is 1868. And meeting her daughter Lottie, whose new business is a thread to the strong women who have gone before her at Dean's Court. I think what's extraordinary is you're taking this lovely craft but you're you modernized it and making it into a business so it's like this i love it yeah. this modern working mother <laughs> taking a craft and making a business out of it 